They've been our friends for a decade now, setting trends and styles and simply looking good. So it is fitting that this year, one of the cast members graces the cover of People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People in the World, Jennifer Aniston. But do you know which Central Perk pals have made the list before? And who is the most beautiful of them all? The answers from People in the News continues. They're the 50 most beautiful people in the world. For the last 15 years, they've been the stars whose smiles captivate the world. The first friend to appear on the most beautiful people cover, Courtney Cox, back in 1995. And while Phoebe, Chandler, and Joey have made the list in years past, Ross has not. Jennifer Aniston's real-life hubby, Brad Pitt, has and does again this year. Joining him on the 2004 list, perennial favorite Halle Berry, tying America's sweetheart, Julia Roberts, with the most appearances, eight. And guess who's the father of two other beauties in this year's issue? Models Alexandra and Theodore Richards' dad is Rolling Stones guitarist, Keith Richards. Keith has never made the cut. People in the News continues now. Call us on. Welcome back to People in the News. When it comes to friends, you know the cast, you know their lives, their love interests, and their catchphrases. But how does it all come together, and how will it end? Once again, here's Sharon Collins. All right, I gotta go. I'm taking Ben to the park. Oh, give him a kiss for me. All right, bye. 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 Later. <laughs> I am so sorry you got caught in the middle of that. I didn't mean to be so out there, but I am furious with him. <laughs> Wow, um, calm down. The reason why the sitcom is the basic unit of American television is that they're easy to watch. Why are you so mad at him? There's got to be a comfort level. There has to be a sense that the show, it both entertains you and also gets you involved to a certain extent in who these people are. You want to be on my list too? Keep talking. I think Friends looks so inviting and easy the way they do it. Action! that you don't see how much work must have gone into uh, constructing these characters, making them work, making them believable. Reset. Okay. What are the secrets behind Friends' decade-long run? How did the creators, crew, writers, and cast put the show together? <laughs> What happens usually is the cast will get together over the weekend and hash out the story. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to the writers, they put their name on it, and then we show up, pretend like we never saw it before, and, you know, right? Yeah. Well, no, yeah, it's a... <laughs> So, okay, so Joey's goal is to get the money. In reality, a typical Friends episode began in the writer's room. I think you could start off at Ham Twin well, and then needs, build to Ham Triplet. We always try to write based on our own experiences. But the, the, the problem is that we work so many hours that we've all run out of experiences. So we, we, get, we have no our friends. And we fall in love in, in like a day. Another challenge, finding a balance between the stories and character development, between humor and emotion. Come on, I'm going to be late for the eye doctor appointment. There are some shows, um, I can think one in particular, where Russ and Rachel break up. I think you should go. That the second act... The scene between Ross and Rachel, there are almost no jokes between them, maybe one or two. All the jokes are coming from the other four listening in. It's whatever feels right. I mean, sometimes you can go for a whole scene and there's maybe a joke and that feels exactly right. And sometimes if, if it isn't like popping joke, 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 you feel like something's wrong with the scene. Creating a Friends episode meant developing storylines for six different characters, all equally important. A lot of them dovetail into each other, which, you know, to come up with in a couple weeks is, that's pretty extraordinary writing. Yeah. The fact that the, the focus could shift, that was a great creative freedom that I think the writers and the directors had. Okay, here we go, guys, and rolling! It was a way to bring in odd subplots and focus on a character for two or three or four episodes and build a kind of story arc throughout the season. Some story arcs were created, then set aside to be used at just the right time. We put off getting Monica and Chandler together for years. After someone had the idea, it was like, it's too soon. It'll be too, it's right on top of jo uh, Ross and Rachel. It's going to be too soon. It was only going to be like a three episode kind of, three or four episode thing. But 
Everybody liked it so much, they just keep keeping it going, mm -hmm. which is really cool for us. Other plot twists came as a last minute surprise, even to the creators. Season eight, when Joey and Rachel got together, we didn't know until halfway through the season that was ever going to happen. Oh my God, that is great! It didn't even occur to us. It was just, we reached a point about halfway through when we were going, we need Rachel to meet somebody interesting. Or Joey. And that's interesting. My hope is that we haven't gone any farther in a larger way, story-wise, than, than life does. A typical production week began on Monday, with the cast and writers going over the script for the first time. They go and rewrite. Tuesday, a new script, we rehearse all day, and they start working on the next week's episode. Tuesday night, the end of the day, about three th between 3.30 and 5, they come for a run-through of the whole show of what we've blocked and rehearsed. The rehearsals also gave the cast a chance to make suggestions. It's a weird thing because we have this idea of who our characters are and what would be, and they're, they're the ones who write them, created them. I am so sorry you got caught in the middle of that. I didn't mean to be so out there. But the I'm actors curious. have learned how they've developed these characters over the years, and the writing plays into that beautifully. The best friend scripts are ones that are very character specific and that really bring us closer to the characters that we've come to know and love. After more rehearsals, shows were taped before a live audience. The live audience would tell us whether a joke was just not good enough, and uh, fortunately uh, we had a writing staff that was fast enough to be able to change that joke right in front of the audience. After Matthew says, yeah, in my eye, you go, me too. I think if you're there watching that night, those moments really stick out in your head because it's like, how did they do that? It's almost like a magic trick. Well, that thing didn't work, but they came back with something new. The result? Over 200 episodes, hookups and breakups, marriages and children, and a place in television history. Number 200! My guess is that Friends is going to join Lucy, Andy Griffith, Dick Van Dyke, The Simpsons, Seinfeld, The Cosby Show, as one of the 10 or 20 programs that will be in perpetual reruns from now until maybe ever. Still to come on People in the News, marriages on screen, marriages off screen, America's fascination with the real lives of its friends. Now back to People in the News. I got the lead in the movie! Hey! On screen, they're the best of friends. Friends, in many ways, those six characters were the epitome of show business chemistry. Off screen, the six cast members formed a tight bond from the beginning. We're just one happy family. We really are. It just <laughs> couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> the six actors on the show going from relative, relative obscurity to, to what they became so quickly, that was a trajectory that they could only really talk to each other about. And I think that helped kind of unite them. That unity would show itself in an unusual way. The cast negotiated their contracts as a group, asking for six equal salaries. It's unprecedented for a cast to band together the way that cast has done. There really was a sense that that uh, power in numbers that the six of them uh, 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 held really got them what they needed. For the latest renegotiation in 2002, each cast member held out for one million dollars an episode. I think the cast of Friends is worth a million dollars an episode easily. And you don't see the kind of faceless corporation that's making millions and millions and billions of dollars off of these people. Their celebrity grew as large as their salaries. It's kind of cool. <laughs> All six people on Friends were uh, young, beautiful, on the make, and therefore interesting to watch what they did. Jennifer Aniston's celebrity status sizzled even more when she married Hollywood hunk Brad Pitt in 2000. Both actors looked to their relationship for support in their careers. Just being able to bounce ideas off someone, uh, you know, off of your, your friend, your best friend, and, and also be able to cry when it's not going well. 
still, as one of Hollywood's golden couples, the tabloids often target Aniston and Pitt. We've been in it for long enough to not take it so seriously, and it's usually always inaccurate. Now we can have more of a laugh uh, uh, from it when we do pay attention to it. We're trying to figure out what our, both of our dream weddings would be like. A relationship that's caused many onlookers to scratch their heads. The marriage of Courtney Cox and David Arquette. They are a lesson in opposites. David is kooky, wild, crazy. Courtney is serious, balanced, mature. Between the two of them, they found a perfect balance. They will soon add a third member to their balancing act. The couple's first baby is due this summer. Lisa. Lisa Kudrow also got married during the show's run in 1995 to French advertising executive Michel Stern. He's just decent. I mean, he's like like ultimately just a decent person and um, I don't know, I'll start crying. <laughs> the couple have a five-year-old son, Julian. Her pregnancy was written into the show with Phoebe having her brother's triplets. It's too hard, too hard! <laughs> Family and privacy rank high on Kudrow's list of priorities. Lisa really is very private. She doesn't hang out with other celebrity types. She really wants to be a mom and a wife and to stay home. Normally we don't really sit next to each other or talk, Lisa or I. David Schwimmer's also managed to keep a low profile. Did you stop, did you stop filming it? He doesn't go to a lot of premieres and things. Um, you know, he has his friends that he hangs out with, but, uh, but he's not a real Hollywood type. However, he's been coupled with his share of Hollywood beauties. David has been linked to sort of a lot of women over the years. You know, he's dated various models. He went out with Natalie Imbruglia. He was out with the actress Millie Avital. Matt LeBlanc and Melissa McKnight celebrate their first wedding anniversary this month. Matt and Melissa met in 1997 through friends. Melissa immediately knew that this was the man she wanted to spend the rest of her life with. In February, the newlyweds welcomed their first child. They have two other children from her previous relationships, but this is Matt's first chance to be a dad himself. Matthew Perry has been linked to a series of high-profile women, including Julia Roberts, Yasmin Bleeth, and Jennifer Capriati. However, it was his struggles with alcohol and prescription drug addiction that played out most publicly. I got into a serious problem with painkillers, a painkiller called uh, Vicodin, and that was mostly just to just to not drink as much as I was. I was getting too hungover, so I tried other things that would uh, that would try to balance balance me out. He feels the need to sort of share what's happened to him in the hope that other people can see themselves in it and maybe get themselves some help. Perry's cast members rallied around him. They completely embraced him, supported him, and again were very protective did not really address the topic with the media, except in respect to say that they supported Matthew and they were really glad he was getting better. A camaraderie they say will outlast the life of their sitcom. All of them say even when the series ends, it will continue, the friendship will remain and they will stay big parts of each other's lives. Still to come on People in the News, how will friends say farewell? We now return to People in the News. Just a few days from now, the last cup of coffee will be sipped in Central Perk. Apartments will be vacated for the last time. A familiar foosball table will be silent. Finito. Enough. After 10 seasons and over 200 episodes, Friends is coming to an end. I don't think there has been a TV farewell since the end of Seinfeld that will be of this magnitude. One friend will stick around. Matt LeBlanc is bringing his character Joey to a spin-off series next season. Road trip. It makes a kind of certain sense for him to move to the West Coast to pursue his acting career. And in that sense, it's a lot better than a lot of other shows. Uh, you know, when they tried to spin off MASH with the show After MASH and show the civilian lives of the MASH characters, that was a complete disaster. Having an ace like Matt and a character that you know the audience loves um, I hate to say it, but it's really ours to screw up. For the rest of the cast, the challenge is to leave behind characters they've played for a decade. The biggest risk they have to their careers is being forever becoming the character they played. When you are Henry Winkler, you become Fonzie. 
Plenty of television stars have tried to jump to the movies. Some make it, some don't. When you're on television, people feel like they know you. They really feel comfortable with you. And they have to feel like they kind of know everything about you. The secret to being a movie star is that there's some little part of you that people don't know. They always want a little more. There's something just a little mysterious about you. The track record for the Friends cast at the box office has been mixed at best. Matt LeBlanc's monkey movie, Ed, was a critical and commercial bomb. Julie! Oh. David Schwimmer's The Pole Bearer was DOA. Look, lady, I'm not going to hit a girl, okay? <laughs> and Matthew Perry has appeared in a string of films, including Serving Sarah and The Whole Nine Yards, none of which have made him an A-list movie star. You all right? Yes. The guys are basically a washout as film actors. They have all tried, and not one of them has whatever that movie magic thing is. The women's film careers have gone considerably better. Courtney Cox had a string of hits with the Scream series. Mm, well, that would explain my constant headaches. Jennifer Aniston hit box office gold with Bruce Almighty. I've never seen the moon that big. We really should waste it. And Lisa Kudrow received critical raves for performances in Analyze This and the opposite of sex. You're probably a blessing in disguise. Lisa Kudrow is great in any film, often in smaller independent films. Jennifer Aniston, I think, possibly is going to have a mid-level movie career as a leading lady. Friends, of course, will never go away completely. When we're up on, uh, you know, housing developments on Neptune in the year 3003 or 3004, we will probably be watching old reruns of, uh, uh, of Friends. It will remain a slice of pop culture, a reflection of America at the turn of the 21st century. You know, some people might argue that Friends is somewhat overrated, that it gets a lot of acclaim and attention because of its popularity. But I think this show's popularity speaks to its quality. Just as uh, the Mary Tyler Moore show kind of took and domesticated the women's movement, Friends really kind of presented what the model of the new American family could be to a emerging young generation that was going to postpone the traditional family of husband and in-laws and all of the rest of it. The Friends cast and crew taped their final episode in January. As they started taping, they played the theme song, and everybody in the audience applauded. And the cast backstage just got so emotional, they started crying, and they had to stop everything and go back and do makeup again. The day had its lighthearted moments as well. Throughout the final taping, everybody was a little nervous, because they were all really conscious of what a big and momentous day it was. Um, at one point, Courtney Cox kept flubbing her lines, and Matthew Perry joked, somebody's going to get fired. And the whole audience broke up laughing. But the question remains, how will these six friends say goodbye? You can have some real head scratchers like the final episode of Seinfeld. You can have these brilliant uh, final episodes like the final episode of Newhart, which was just a dream referring back to the old Bob Newhart show. The expectations weighed on the show's creators as they worked on the final season. We say it jokingly to each other, but it's not a joke when you go, wow, this is our last first episode. This is our last Thanksgiving show. And there's an element of well, it better be great. Better be really special. And obviously, as we get to the finale, when it's the last episode, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of pressure to make it good. So, how will Friends end? At the end of the day, all we can do is do our best and try to come up with something that's funny and surprising and hopefully uh, make people cry a little bit. For the millions who love Friends, the final laughs and tears come Thursday during a two-hour farewell event. That's it for this edition of People in the News. Coming up next week, the legendary Carly Simon reflects on her life and her greatest hits. I'm Paula Zahn. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay with CNN for the very latest on what's happening in your world today. For more on Jennifer Aniston and the rest of the most beautiful people in the world, pick up a copy of People magazine this week.